Hello, people of grace. Today, I want to talk with you about um, awareness and being strong in grace. Over my next couple of pastoral connects on Thursdays, I'm going to ultimately be work, walking us through 2 Timothy chapter 2 and just these really powerful statements that Paul makes to Timothy, uh, starting with being strong in grace. I think all of us hope that we would be very gracious and people, very gracious people and be very strong in grace. Um, but Paul might give us a little bit of a roadmap of how to hold ourselves accountable to get there. So we're not going to start by talking about being strong in grace. I want to back up a little bit from 2 Timothy chapter 2. And look at this statement that Paul makes to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.7, where he says that God has not given us a spirit of timidity. Many translations say fear, but timidity is probably um, a better way to say that. God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-control. So I want to talk about that statement today because I think we see that kind of spirit of power and of love and of self-control and not of timidity in Daniel. And the book of Daniel has been driving our Sunday messages lately. Uh, I think he's someone who modeled the kind of spirit that Paul was trying to help Timothy develop. And I think Daniel was someone who was strong in grace. So that's why we're looking at 2 Timothy, and here looking at 2 Timothy 1, 7. And I want to start with this idea of God has not given us a spirit of timidity or fear. And I want to illustrate that by contrasting it with prudence. Proverbs chapter 22, 3 says that the prudent man sees the danger and takes refuge or avoids it. But the simple walks right in. And prudence has to do with this kind of ability to think two or three steps ahead and, and be wise in that way. And prudence is only a virtue if it is used the right way. And I want to give an example of that. The idea of prudence often comes out in the Bible when it's used in a bad way as crafty. In fact, the serpent is called crafty or prudent, but he's not using it in a good way. Satan is very good at thinking two or three steps ahead and then using that power to manipulate us, especially if we're being simple. So prudence is this ability to kind of plan and be strategic. However, uh, philosophers, ancient philosophers, talked about how prudence and timidity or fear are kind of the upside and the downside of the same power. So many people who are actually struggling with timidity phrase it as prudence. And in the same way, many people who are thinking they're being brave, but they're actually being simple or foolish or naive, frame someone else's prudence as timidity. So how do we figure out which is which? Well, the short answer is self-awareness. We don't really need to judge anybody else's state. If I want to do something and I don't think it's that dangerous, but you think it is, I'm going to say you're being timid. In the same way, you're not going to say you're being timid. You're going to say you're being prudent and I'm being reckless. Um, and the answer is probably somewhere in between there. God is prudent, but God is not timid. In fact, God is willing to take uh, great risks. He shows that by creating souls, many of which he will lose in the end. So the difference between timidity and prudence is shown in the things that Paul says after this. God has not given us a spirit of timidity. Don't hide your timidity by claiming it's prudence. Make sure you're being prudent 
by demonstrating power, love, and self-control. And power is an innate ability. Um, love is unconquerable good will. And self-control is the ability to master yourself, to stay open to input. Sometimes it's even used as someone who's responsive to advice, who's responsive to people who see things differently. And as someone who's just really always trying to get better and hold their own passions and predispositions and preferences and biases under that lens of, am I becoming a better person? And God has already given us a spirit where we have the innate ability to do whatever we need to do as far as walking with God. We have the innate power to always be operating from a place of love or unconquerable goodwill. And we already have within us the potential through God's spirit that he puts in his children to be open to input, to be open to different perspectives, and not try to seize some moral high ground by saying, I'm not being reckless, you're being timid. Or the other way around of saying, I'm not being timid, I'm being prudent, you're being reckless. And these are all traps of the devil that, for the purpose of our lesson today, keep us from being strong in grace. And that's the first admonition that Paul gives in 2 Timothy chapter 2 to Timothy. Timothy, don't give in to a spirit of timidity. Have a spirit of power and love and sound mind. And he's building up to 2 Timothy 2, 1. Be strong in grace. So what does it mean to be strong in grace? Being strong in grace means being unconquerably gracious. Um, and so often, if, we, if a spirit of timidity or avoidance is getting the better of us, something comes into our life, some stimulus, whether it's a thought we have internally or some external event. And if we were just honest, we'd recognize, oh, whoa, I kind of had a fear spike in my gut. I had a spike. Um, so what does that mean? What's really going on inside me? And... I don't want to allow the fact that this thing made me spike cause me to then say, you're bad. A fear is just trying to get that spike, that gut level fear spike, is just trying to get your attention. It's trying to help you be aware. And as soon as you own that and don't immediately make a value judgment, you're not operating from a place of um, inappropriate threat or timidity. You're operating, from, you're operating from a place of power. Once you're operating from a place of power, you're able to say, am I being loving here? And am I open to input, responsive to advice, trying to get better, and willing to take stands and take risks for the sake of God's kingdom, appropriate risk, not foolish risk, prudent risk, like Daniel was willing to do. And it seems like maybe Timothy was struggling with that. He's a pastor of a church, and Paul's telling Timothy, you can't let this avoidance or this timidity hamstring you as a leader. You're going to need to overcome that and be strong in grace. So the test of whether I'm operating in a spirit of God's power and of love and of self-control and not giving in to timidity really comes out in how graciously I respond to other people. If I seize the moral high ground right away, if I mock them, if I uh, inappropriately uh, shame them publicly, if I uh, just make fun of them, if I dismiss them, I am not being strong in grace. And we're living in very difficult times that are causing all of us to spike. And some of us, as we've been under this for months now, are becoming timid. And I'm not saying anyone specifically is, I'm saying all of us um, as can train ourselves to become avoidant because we're already so stressed. And we wanna make sure we don't do that. We obviously want to avoid the legitimate dangers. Don't go into a crowded bar and hang out uh, during this pandemic time. 
Um, in order to protect others, wear your mask, especially if you're indoors and in a crowded space, socially distanced from people. These are prudent measures to take. Um, but as we train ourselves to always be thinking, I have to avoid danger, which we should do, we are also training ourselves to not be as aware of when maybe I'm becoming timid and my timidity is masking as prudence. Um, and I just close with what I've already said. Are you operating from a place of personal power under God's spirit? Are you uh, being loving in your motive? And is that unconquerable in you? And are you practicing self-control and open to advice, always getting better? Are you being strong in grace or are you becoming dismissive to other people? If you're becoming dismissive to other people, you might not be operating as much in God's spirit of love as we like to tell ourselves we are. Let's show the world as Christians that we will respond from a place of power and of love and of self-control and be open to input because we are strong in the grace that is ours to have through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be like Daniel and be strong in grace. Dare to be a Daniel. Have a great evening.